We're apparently about to see a landlord exodus. Buyer demand has dried up and the mortgage market is changing fast. Where is the housing market heading next? Stick around as we dive into all that and more in our monthly market update. Landlords will rush to sell, according to The Telegraph, as a result of the capital gains tax allowance being halved from April next year. Will they though? The maximum increase in tax would be £1,764, which hardly seems worth rushing to sell into a buyer's market for. It does mean that if you're planning to sell anyway, there's an incentive to get it through before April, but the tax saving doesn't give much wiggle room to accept a lower offer for a quick sale and still end up coming out ahead. And it really is a buyer's market at the moment. Buyer demand has almost halved since the mini budget, which will surely go down as the most ironically named fiscal event of all time. We've been talking about the market cooling all the way back since June, but previously it had just been reverting to the five year average as some of the crazy heat was coming out of the market. However, since September, demand has fallen to way below average. As you can see on the chart, there's normally a drop off towards the end of the year. So the question is whether buyers are just sitting out until the end of the year and will return in January, or whether demand is going to stay low. The answer will lie in mortgages, which we'll come to shortly. Interestingly, there's a big regional picture here with sales volumes falling furthest in the areas that have got the most stretched affordability. The good news for London is that it hasn't been affected much yet, but the bad news for London is that's because it's already been performing so poorly over recent years. The same pattern is playing out when it comes to price cuts. Across the country, on average, 11% of properties that are listed for sale have had a price cut of over 5%. In the southeast of England and the east of England, that's almost triple, with almost a third of properties having price cuts at that level. This regional picture is going to be a big theme coming into 2023. Zoopla is projecting house price falls of up to 5% over the next year, but they say it's going to be concentrated in expensive markets, meaning largely the South. So we could easily see a complex picture next year where prices are rising in some areas and falling in others. If you're an investor who's in it for the long term like we are, a choppy, confusing market like next year is shaping up to be could be ideal for doing strong deals while sentiment is negative and buyer competition is low. That's what we're going to be doing. As I said, mortgages will be the key to how the market performs going into next year. Mortgage rates have fallen consistently over the last month and money facts believe they could fall further still. Interest cover ratios are just as important to investors as headline rates are. These are the rates that rental income is stress tested against to make sure that the investor will still be able to pay the mortgage if rates rise. We saw lenders jack these right up after the mini budget and now they're coming down again, especially for five year products. Paragon have reduced theirs from 7% to 5.5% and Accord have reduced theirs too. Those are just two examples of a pattern that we're seeing across the sector which we expect to see continuing. Coming up, we'll talk about a whole new level of political interference in the market. But first, remember we cover all the big news stories and give you our analysis in our weekly newsletter. It's completely free and you can sign up for it at propertyhub.net slash news. Politicians really don't want house prices to fall and they don't like people feeling poorer because it's not just bad for GDP figures and unemployment, it's also bad for their chances of being re-elected. In Spain, the government has announced measures to support homeowners whose mortgages have become unaffordable, which are thought to benefit a million people. Similar support has been introduced in Hungary, Portugal, Poland and Greece. In the UK, the Liberal Democrats have proposed something similar, wanting to make grants available to homeowners whose mortgage payments have increased by more than 10% of their income. Kind of weird that there's no talk of anything similar for renters, whose rents could also have increased by more than 10% of their income, but that just tells you something about where politicians' motivations lie. We expect fixed mortgage rates to fall over the coming months, but if they don't, we may see policies like this get broader political support. But why do we expect interest rates to fall when the base rate is probably going to go up further? Well, watch this video next, where we explain how the mortgage market works, what's happening right now, and what we believe is going to happen in the future.